أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So let's take a look at the exercises to lesson 19 in the book this is going to be on page 116 and in the first exercise uh, letter A, it wants us to give the majzoom form of the verb. The majzoom form. It calls it the jasib, but uh, we're going to call it the majzoom. So let's start with number one. The verb is ya'khulu, and what will the Majzoom form B? Ya'khud. So the Ya'khudu, the Dhamma, will turn to a Suku. Instead of saying Ya'khudu, we'll say Ya'khud. We can go a little slower with the first few until everybody gets the hang of it. Ya'khudu is the normal form of the verb in the imperfect. And when it becomes majzoom, it becomes ya'khud. Now, when, what's an example of a case when it will become ya'khud? Because it won't be ya'khud by itself. What's one example of a s sentence when we'll say majzoom? Lam ya'khud. So ya'khudu means he takes. If we add lam, meaning he did not, lam ya'khud, he did not take, it will become majzoom. Uh, or we can add uh, in, which is conditional. We'll talk about that later in detail, but in ya'khud, meaning if he takes. So that's what, a few examples of uh, majzoom. Second one is ta'buduna. So how will that become majzoom? Ta'buduna. Ta'bud, we'll drop the noon. So it will become ta'budu. And in writing, we will add an alif. That alif is silent, just to separate this word from the next word. So it will be ta'budu. The noon will drop. That noon was a sign of ra, or a marfu verb. Number three is yasduqane. It's dual. How will that become majzum? Yasduqa. Again, the noon will drop, so yasduqane will become yasduqa. The next one is taskunu. Taskunu can be one of two meanings. It can be here, taskunu, and it can be uh, anta taskunu. So it can be the third person feminine singular, she, or it can be the second person masculine singular, you. In both cases, if it is to become majzoom, what will it become? Taskunu will become taskun, with a sukun. Yes, that's also true. In this verb, because the last letter is a noon, the feminine plural would be taskun plus a noon, right? Taskun na, correct? However, that will be written taskun na, because the last letter is already a noon. In that case, if it were that uh, that form, the antunna form, all of you women, in that case it will be what kind of a noon? Is the noon a sign of marfu? No. So that noon will not drop. And taskunna, if it's the feminine plural form, will remain taskunna. Even if it's majzoom, it will remain taskunna. We'll see a few more examples of that. Number five, narhamu. 
What will Narhamu change to? Narham. Narhamu will change to Narham. Aj'alu. Aj'al. Ta'kulu. Ta'kul. With a sukun. Ta'lamna. Ta'lamna is again a feminine plural. And ta'lamna, when it's feminine plural, the noon does not drop. So there's no change. If it's majzum, it will remain ta'lamna. Let's look at the, the meaning actually. I'll start from number one. Ya'khudhu, he takes. Ta'abuduna, all of you worship. Yasduqane, they tell the truth. Taskunu, she or you resides. Narhamu, we have mercy. Aj'alu, I put or make or in some cases do. Ta'kulu, she or you eat. Ta'lamna, all of you women know. Yadilluna will become Yadillu. The noon will drop and will add a silent alif in writing. Yadillu, they go astray. They deviate. Tasma'ina, you feminine listen. How will that become majzum? Tasma'i, the noon will drop. Tasma'i. Number 11, Yadlulna, that's a feminine plural, they lead. And it will remain Yadlulna. Because remember, the feminine plural, the noon does not drop. So the feminine plural, that noon remains, no other change takes place. Yadlulna, uh, they lead. Yakhrujane, those two men exit, how will that change? Drop the noon. So it'll become Yahru Ja. Yahru Ja. Ta'muru, she commands or you command. Ta'mur. That's it. Ta'mur. Na'amalu, we do. Na'mal. Na'mal. And then Yadlimna, Yadlimna, they oppress feminine. How will that become Majzum? Yadlimna, the noon will stay, no change. And then we have uh, Yes Alo, he asks. Will become yes al with sukun. Tadkuruna you mention or remember will become tadkuru. Tachlukane you create or uh, they create can be feminine. Tachluka. Takhluqa. Tab'athina, you send, feminine. Tab'athi. Drop the noon. And yaghirru or yaghurru. Yaghurru is the more common. It means to deceive. Yaghurru will become. So it can become Yaghurra or Yaghurre or in this case if it's Yaghur it can even become Yaghurru just as if there were no change and we're also permitted to do Yaghrur Yaghrur So we have Yaghrur Yaghurre, Yaghurra, Yaghurru 
the most common ones that you will see will be either Yaghrur or Yaghurra with the Fatha instead of a Dhamma. That's the most common message. Then we have Ashhadu, I witness. What will that become? Ashhad, with Sukun. Tafirru, you flee or she flees. Tafirra or Tafirri or Tafrir. Is that visible on the screen? Then we have Tajidna. What are the root letters for this? Wajada. Wajada, and then in the Mudare, the wow is dropped. So Wajada becomes Yajedo, he finds. Tajedo, she finds. Tajedo, you find. Uh, Tajedina, you feminine find. And then Tajidna is the feminine plural. Tajid, tajidina, Tajidane, Tajidna. All of you women find. When it becomes Majzum, nothing will change. It's still tajid, Tajidna. And then we have Yadkhuluna, they enter, that will become Yadkhulu, drop the noon. And Tanzuru will become Tanzur. That's a Sukhu. <coughs> Tanzuru will become Tanzur. Tanzur is Majzum. Any questions on those words? Tab'athi, because in the feminine singular, that noon is a sign of marfu case, so that noon drops. In the feminine singular, it will drop. Tab'athina is feminine singular. The only time the noon does not drop is if it's feminine plural. Now, in B, we want to give the imperative. And remember, imperative in Arabic is fi'lul amr, the imperative form of the verb. The first one is akhada. So what we'll do is we'll take it to the mudari, which will be the anta form, ta'khudu. Correct. Then what we'll do is we'll drop the ta. Right? And in this case, we'll also drop the Hamza. It's Ta'khudu, so it becomes Khudu, but then we give it Sukun, so it becomes Khud. Do we need to add a Hamza at the beginning? We don't, because the Kha has a Haraka, there is no problem in pronouncing it. So Khud, take. Khudh biyadi, take my hand. Number two is farra. The first thing we'll do is we'll take it to the anta form, which is what? Tafirru. And then we'll make it majzum. So for example, we can have tafrir. Tafrir. Or we can have, for example, tafirra. Correct? Or tafirri. Now, in the case of tafrir, when we drop the ta, we're left with a fa which has a sukun, and then ra with a kasra, and a ra with a sukun. We can't pronounce a word starting with sukun. We can't say frith. So we add an, a Hamza, and what haraka do we give the Hamza? Ifrir, because it has a Kasra, so we give it a Kasra. We say Ifrir. That means flee. Farra, he fled. Tafirru, you flee. Fir, Ifrir, flee. And that's Hamza tul wasl. So if it's in the middle of a sentence, 
then that Hamza will be dropped. We'll say wafrir or fafrir. If we instead make the form tafirra or tafirri, in that case, what we'll do is when we drop the ta, we're left with firra or firri. Do we need to add a hamza in this case? No, because it's uh, there's already a haraka on the fa. It's easily pronounceable. We can say firra. So when you want to tell somebody flee, you can say firra, or you can say firri, or you can say ifrir. In the Quran, it's always the uh, the stop form that's used, which is known as fakkul idgham in the majzum and in the amr. In uh, normal Arabic, either one can be seen. With the amr, you're more likely to see this form used. Because this form is a little difficult to tell, is it Amr, is it something else? But when you have this form with the Hamza at the beginning, it's clear that this is Amr, it's intended. Ifrir. So I can say, Umdud Yadak, extend your hand. Number three is abada. So we'll start by taking it to the mudare, which would be ta'budu. And then we'll make it majzum. Ta'bud. And we'll drop the ta, so we're left with ayn sukun. With sukun. Ta'bud. Can we pronounce that? No. We need to add a hamza. And because it has a dhamma, we'll add a dhamma. So we'll say u'bud. Worship your Lord. The next one is Sami'a. The Mubarak is Tasma'u. With Sukun it will become Tasma'. And then when we drop the Ta, we have to add a Hamza with a Kasra. In this case, the Meme has a Fatha. Correct? But notice that we never add a Fatha with the Hamza. If we add a Hamza at the beginning, that Hamza will either have a Dhamma or it will have a Kasra. So even though in Isma' the Meme has a Fatha, the corresponding Haraka on the Hamza will be a Kasra. Isma' Rahima what is the mubarak? Tarhamu. We'll make it sukun or majzum. And then we'll drop the ta. We'll add a hamza. Irham. In uh, Dua Kumail, we read Irham Man Rasumalihil Buka. Irham, O our Lord, have mercy on a person whose only um, capital is uh, to weep. Irham. Nadara. What is the mudari form in the second person? Tanduru. Tanduru. And when it's majzum, tandur. And then we will drop the ta, and will we have to add a hamza or not? We will have to add a hamza. Now, 
Notice a few things. When we write these words, we do not write it with a Hamza. So I write Undur like this. I don't write Undur like this. Why do I not write it like that? Because this is used for a Hamza to the And the Hamza in Undur is not Hamza to the it's Hamza to the Wasp. It can be dropped. If there's a wow before it, we'll say one dhur. We won't say wa un dhur. One dhur. No, it will have a haraka, but generally that haraka will drop because generally the words will be in the middle of speech. And so it'll drop. And also, note that when I say that we make the previous word majzum, I don't mean that literally because the fi'l al-amr is not considered to be majzum. It's considered to be mabni. But it's just like the majzum form of the mubarak. So it's the same, um, same ending. So you can think of it just as if it is majzum. The next one is akala. What is the mubarak? Ta'kulu. And what we'll do is we'll make it majzum. And uh, once it is uh, majzum, then we will drop the ta, so it will become what? Yes. Cool. Once it is once we drop the ta, in this case we'll drop the hamza as well. Okay. There are a few verbs, if you remember, that begin with a hamza. When we make the command form, we drop the hamza as well. So when we drop the hamza, we're left with this was ta kul, correct? We're left with just kul. And kul does not need to have anything added. First letter is already a, uh, has a haraka, doesn't need anything. So we can say kul. It's used in the Quran. Kul. Kulu wa shrabu. Next is ba'atha. Ba'atha, what is the mudari' for that? Tab'athu, and then it will become tab'ath, and then what we will do is we will drop the ta. Now the ba has a sukun here, so we have to add a hamza, and it will have a kasra. Ibath. Ibath. Then we have Sa'ala becomes Tas'alu. Then we'll make it uh, Tas'al. We'll drop the Ta. It becomes is al and in addition to is al there's also a shortened form which is sal that's where the same famous saying of Imam Ali comes from sal is the sing is the singular Salah is the dual. Salu is the plural. Salu, all of you ask. Ni, me. Saluni, saluni. Ask me, ask me. Qabla an tafqiduni. Before you lose me. Before you are deprived of me. So salu, saluni is salu plus ni. Ni means to me. Salu is the plural of sal. That's equivalent to saying is aluni. 
is alu or salu mean the same thing. And then we have dalla. What's the mudare? Tadullu. That will become either tadlul or tadulla, tadulle or tadullu. If it's tadlul, then we will end up with udlul. And if it's tadullu or tadulla, then we'll end up with dulla or dulli or dullu. And both of them uh, can be used. Udlul or dulla. Any questions? So far so good? Okay, let's read the sentences. What I will do is I will read the sentences slowly so you can check your um, grammar, uh, the voweling. And if you need to fill in the voweling, you can fill in the voweling. Then I will reread the sentence phrase by phrase and we can translate it phrase by phrase. So the second reading then help me with the translation. The first one, though, just uh, fix the vocalization if you need to fix any of the vowel sounds. وَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ أُسْكُنُوا Now, when you're reading it, قُلْنَا لَهُمْ has a uh, sukun on the meme, and أُسْكُنُوا starts with the dhamma. But what will happen when you're reading it is that هُمْ will become هُمُ. We'll give a dhamma to the meme to make it easier to pronounce, and then we will drop the hamza. So we'll say, "Qulna lahumus, lahumus." The meme and the hum will become humu, and then the hamza will drop, and that meme will join to the scene. Humus. So we'll say, "Qulna lahumus kunu hadhil qariyata wa kulu." Minha Haythu Shitum. Instead of like this, we'll take one and say, Yes, Firu. Then we will say, Yes, Firu. Yes. If it had been Yes, so we'll say, Kulna Lahumur Firu. The meme will always have a dhamma. The, that dhamma is added to the meme not because of, because of uskun. That dhamma is added to the meme because the uh, plural pronoun, whenever it is going to be given a haraka, if we need to give it a haraka, it will be a meme. So kum will become kumu. Hum will become humu. Tum will become tumu. So kultum will become kultumullah. So now let's translate. وَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ Go ahead. We said to them, أُسْكُنُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةَ أُسْكُنُوا dwell and then قَرِيَةَ is the مفعول به هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةَ Dwell or reside this village. Now in Arabic it's a direct object but in English we don't say dwell this village we say dwell in this village. But in Arabic, it's a direct object, maf'ul bih, therefore it's mansub. Uskunu hadihil qariyata. Wa kulu minha. And eat from it. Ha refers back to the qariya. Refer, uh, eat from the village. Haythu shi'tum. Haythu means where or wherever. So, haythu shi'tum. Wherever you will or desire. Shaitum is the plural of Sha'a. Sha'a, he willed. Insha'Allah, if God willed. Shaitum, if you will. Shaitum is you will or you desire. Haythu shaitum, wherever you desire. Number two. 
ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين Now translation ففروا إلى الله So فروا is a command So flee to Allah Generally, when you see an exclamation point, it's to indicate a command. That's of course not in classical Arabic or in the Quran, but in modern Arabic, that exclamation point is there, just like in English, to indicate it's a command. Firru ilallah. It's not saying they fled, but it's saying flee to God. Inni lakum, verily I am for you, minhu, from him, nadirun, mubinun. I am a clear warner. ما تسقط من ورق إلا يعلمها. ما تسقط This ما is for a negation. ما تسقط It does not fall. So there does not fall min waraqin. Min here is uh, extraneous. So you don't translate it. So ma tasqutu min waraqin, you'll translate ma tasqutu waraqun. Ma tasqutu waraqun, a leaf does not fall. Illa ya'lamuha, illa ya'lamuha, except that he knows it. Waraq is a collective noun. And it can be treated as masculine or feminine. Because it can refer to one or more. Waraqa is specifically one leaf. But waraq can refer to, it's a collective, it can refer to one or to more leaf. Uh, and normally it would be treated as masculine, but it can be treated as feminine as well, because it's collective. Yes, uh, only a noun that comes after illa will become mansu. In this case, the ya'lamuha is considered to be a hal. But it's a verb, it's a sentence. So the... Uh, the i'rab will not change. Remember, the i'rab of a verb is affected by those specific w words that we mentioned. So a verb will become mansub if it has an or lan or k or idan or one of those types of words before it. Otherwise, the fi'l will not change its i'rab. So ya'lamuha is marfu, the verb. Because there's no an or len or other verb before it, other word before it that would change its era. So ma tasqutu min waraqin illa ya'lamuha. And it would probably be more common to say ya'lamuhu. That ya'lamuha is not incorrect. La تبعث مالك إليهم حتى تعلم أهم أتقياء أم لا لا تبعث is a negative command meaning don't send مالك your wealth or your property إليهم to them. Hatta ta'lama until you know Ahum atqiya are they are they ahum are they pious am la or not? Am is the same as o o la or am la or not. With um, with 
a we use am a home at kia amla now the next sentence is uh, longer so let's just take it piece by piece qalat nisa u misra fa qalat nisa u misra so nisa u misra the women of misr said inna lanara zalikha inna verily we lanara see not saw but see zalikha is the name of uh, the wife of the aziz of egypt the wife of the king of egypt who uh, tried to uh, mislead yusuf we see zalikha fi dalalin mubin We see her to be in clear error. فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِقَوْلِهِنَّ Lama here means when. So when سَمِعَتْ She heard بِقَوْلِهِنَّ Of their word or of their speech. دَعَتْهُنَّ Da'at is from da'a, she called them. وَقَالَتْ لِيُوسُفَ And she said to Yusuf, أُخْرُجْ عَلَيْهِنَّ Come out, yeah, come out over them, meaning in front of them. Now, when we pause, we'll say قَالَتْ لِيُوسُفْ أُخْرُجْ But of course, if we don't pause, we'll say وَقَالَتْ لِيُوسُفْ أَخْرُجْ يُوسُفْ أَخْرُجْ عَلَيْهِنَّ فَلَمَّا رَأَيْنَهُ So when? لَمَّا رَأَيْنَهُ They, feminine plural. When they saw him, قلنا. They said, ليس هذا بشرا. This is not a man. This is not a human. In هذا إلا ملك كريم. In here is used also for negation. In هذا إلا this is not except for ملك كريم a noble angel. So he is not but a noble angel. Is that sentence clear? The translation. Uh, I'll read the Arabic and the translation. فَقَالَتْ نِسَاءُ مِصْرَ The women of Misr then said, إِنَّا لَنَرَى زَلِيخَ Verily we see زَلِيخَ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ In clear error. فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِقَوْلِهِنَّ So when she heard their speech, دَعَتْهُنَّ She called them. وَقَالَتْ لِيُوسُفْ she said, and she said to Yusuf, "Ukhruj alayhinna, go out in front of them." Falamma ra'aynahu, so when they saw him, "Qulna," they said, all of those women said, "Laysa hada basharan, this is not a man. In hada illa malakun kareem, this is not but a noble angel." And let's look at one more sentence. Sofa ya'lamuna. Hina yarawna al-adaba man adallu. So, sofa ya'lamuna. They will know. They, sh they shall know. Hina yarawna al-adaba. Hina means when. When yarawna. They see the punishment. Man adallu. Man means who. Who is Adallu, more misguided. Like Akbar means bigger. Adal, more, more misguided. It's not a verb, it's a noun. So Akbar is a noun meaning bigger. Asghar is a noun meaning smaller. Adal is a noun meaning more misguided. Right? Amar 
is a noun is a noun meaning more bitter from murrun to bitter aaz means more honored or more mighty ajal more noble more glorious So we'll stop there and we'll resume inshallah completing these tamreens and looking at the rest of lesson 19 and then begin lesson 20 inshallah uh, after the uh, prayer. Bismillah. We're going to return to the homework and now because um, we want to get through the rest of the homework somewhat more quickly, what I will do is uh, I will read off the answers and um, we'll try to get through the homework uh, as quickly as possible. We've done number six and we're going to be on number seven. So I won't wait for you, I'll just read the translation and inshallah we'll finish the the homework and then we'll get to the uh, material from today. So number seven on page 117, exercise C. Ya Rabbana, O oh our Lord, Igfir lana, forgive for us. Warhamna and have mercy on us. Wa anta arhamur rahimin and you are the most merciful of the merciful. Number eight, Ya ayyuhan nasu udhukuru, or if you combine it, you'll say Ya ayyuhan nasu udhukuru, Allah, udhukuru Allah, dhikran kathiran. O oh, you people, remember God, a great remembering or a frequent remembering. Number nine, Qul huwa Allahu ahadun. Lam yalid. Say, he is God, the one he has not begotten. Meaning, he has not had children. Number ten, فَعَلِمْنَا مِنْهُ مَا لَمْ نَعْلَمْ So we knew from him, or we learned from him, what we did not know. Number eleven, فَخُذْهَا بِالْقُوَّةِ so take it with strength. Wa'amur. Wa'amur is also a command. Wa'amur qawmaka. And command your people. An ya'khudhu amwalan nasi. That they take the wealth or the, the possessions, the amwal of the people. And command your people that they take the possessions of the people. And number twelve, Awalam Tansahna Allah Nakaraba Alladina Hum Ashadumina Wahum Maruna Ala Madinatina. Awalam Tansahna, did you not advise us? An La Nakaraba. Allah here is An La. That we not come close or approach. الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَشَدُّ Those who are stronger than us. وَهُمْ مَارُونَ While they are passing عَلَى مَدِينَتِنَا By our city. Questions? And now D we want to translate into Arabic. The enemy has drawn near Fad, Tarubal, Aduwu. So let us flee. Fa, Lenaf, Rir. Right, now what happens is we have Lenaf, Rir, but when the Fa comes, the Lam gets a Sukun. Fal, Naf, rir. 
You can also say fal nafirra fal nafirri. or If anybody has a question during this, then just please raise your hand and let me know. They forbade me. Manauni. Those of you who have worked out the homework, feel free to call out the answers if you have answers that you have ready. To guide you to the garden. An Adulla, that'll be Mansu. An Adulla Kum. So Manauni An Adulla Kum. To guide you to the garden. Ilal Jannah or Al Hadiqa. In which they are. Allati, we won't say Allati because Jannah is feminine, so we'll say Allati. Il Jannah Allati, in which they are, whom? Fiha, right? The one that, whom Fiha, they are in it. Uh, yes, you can say they forbade me actually, yes. Uh, Nahoni is better than Mana'u. Because mana'u means to prevent. So mana'u is to prevent, that's okay. But nahawni is uh, more precise. Naha, naha, ya, nahaw. Ni, mi. Number three. I have no strength. La, quwata, li. La quwwata li, there is no strength with me, or I have no strength to lead you an adullakum or an adullaka. A plural would be adullakum. A right. So a right, you can say al uh, haqqi for example, to the straight, to the truth, and al ilal haqqi And then when you are lost is correct. <coughs> you said what? Ida tadilluna. It's correct. When tadilluna, you are uh, misguided or you are astray. Very good. He will advise her. So you can say sofa. <coughs> sofa yansahu. He will advise her. So ha. <coughs> to invite. Right? So that means that, that she invite. Right? An. That. She invite. Tad'uwa. She should invite. So Tad'uwa. Tad'uwa means she invites. And then it's Mansub and Tad'uwa. All those who inhabit the city. Kulla. Man. All the ones. Right? Instead of man, you can say Alladina. So all of those or all of Alladina inhabit the city. Yes, Kununa Al Madinata Kulla Man Yas Kununa Al Madinata or Kulla Ladina Yas Kununa Al Madinata and their number is great. Yes, their number is great, so we'll say Wa Ada Dohom. وَعَدَدُهُمْ Their number كَثِيرٌ وَعَدَدُهُمْ كَثِيرٌ No, you don't need to say يَسْكُنُونَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ You can say يَسْكُنُونَ الْمَدِينَةِ 
اسكن يا ادم اسكن انت وزوجك او ادم او ادم اسكن دوال انت يو وزوجك and your spouse الجنة paradise so in Arabic you don't say you don't need to say في الجنة يا ادم اسكن انت وزوجك الجنة سكن المدينة تا he dwelled in the city Number five, it was not possible for me to forgive them. Ma kana li to forgive them. An aghfira, so that I forgive them. So an aghfira, that I forgive for them. So. In Arabic, we will say that I forgive for them. An aghfira lahum. For them. Because in Arabic, the thing that you're forgiving is always the sin. So it's always ghafartu uh, dhamb. I forgave the sin. Right? In dua kumay, we have ighfir Forgive for me the sins that. So forgive for me. اغفر لي الذنوب التي تقطأ الرجاء الذنوب التي تنزل البلاء الذنوب التي تقطأ الرجاء and all of those uh, attributes are of the sin that we want forgiven what's to be forgiven is the sin not the person you're forgiving for the person the sin so an اغفر لهم for me to forgive for them Um, it's not possible for it was not possible for me to forgive them, so I had no mercy on them. Fama Rahim to whom? Rahim to whom? I had mercy on them. Ma Rahim to whom? I had no mercy on them. You can also say Falam Arhamhum. Yes. Falam Arhamhum. That's the same meaning. Falam Arhamhum. Dwell here, masculine singular. Uskun, Huna, here, and eat of the fruits of these trees. وَكُلْ مِنْ مِنْ ثَمَر مِنْ ثَمَر or مِنْ ثَمَرَات هَا ذِهِ الْأَشْجَار It's plural So هَا ذِهِ الْأَشْجَار or you can say هذا الشجر as well, but هذا الأشجار. But do not approach that nation and do not approach. ولا تقربا. Do not approach that nation. Well, if it's feminine, so you'll say, for example, تلك الأمة. That nation. Or ذلك القوم. If you say the word قوم, it's masculine. You say ذلك القوم. If you say أمة, then you'll say تلك الأمة, because أمة is feminine. So ولا تقرب. Sorry, ولا تقرب, because it's singular. So we're saying أسكن هنا وكل, both singular. من ثمر هذه الأشجار ولا تقرب. And don't approach تلك الأمة that nation lest hellfire consume you. فا تأكلك النار فا تأكلك that hellfire consume or the fire consume. And finally, number seven, oh my son, ya 
بونیا اور یا ابنی اور یا ابنی مائی سان This is Hamza Tulwas. So you can say, Yab ni. Take this property of mine. Khud. This property of mine. So property of mine is Mali. Right? Maloka is your property. Property of mine, Mali. This, Hadha. So notice the Hadha has to come at the end in this phrase. You won't say Hadha Mali, you'll say Mali Hadha. Why is that? Because Hadha Mali means this is my property. And you don't want to say this is my property, you want to say this property of mine. So say Khud Mali Hadha. Take this, take of my, my property this. Take my property this. Khud Mali Hadha. And be merciful. Warham. And be merciful. Towards those who have less wealth than you. Warham alladina You can say for example Lahum Malun Akallu Min Malika or Alladina Maluhum Aqallu minka. Their wealth is less than you. Could you have said Hadha min mali? Khud hadha min mali? That would mean take this from my wealth. But he's not saying take this from my wealth. He's saying take this. Of mine is the same as saying my property. So book of mine is the same as saying my book. In Arabic you will say my book. You won't say book of mine. In some of the colloquial Arabic accents there is a way to say of mine. But in classical Arabic the pronoun will be attached. So for those of you who came uh, just re um, as we're finishing up the homework, we did go through the be beginning part of the homework in more detail. And uh, inshallah, the recording will be up for you to take a look at. Now let's take a look at the end of lesson uh, 19. This is a very simple um, grammatical point, which is in regard to the vocative, or al-munada. When you are calling something. This is one of the few times in Arabic when it's straightforward and simple and there's not a whole lot of confusion. Even though there are details that we can uh, bring in to introduce confusion if you'd like, but we're, we're not going to do that. When you call on a noun, right, then what generally happens is that you will use ya to indicate that you're calling. After ya, there will never be a alif la. So if you're calling al Hussein, you won't say ya al Hussein. You'll say ya Hussein. If you're calling al Abbas, you won't say ya al Abbas. You'll say ya Abbas. Of course, if the name does not have alif la anyway, then there's no problem. Ya Muhammad, ya Ali. The only exception is if it's Allah. You can say Ya Allah. Ya Allah. But it has a lifla. So it has a lifla, but it's a little bit of a different alifla. So you'll say Ya Allah. In classical Arabic, this Allah, the, when you say Ya Allah, the Hamza is pronounced. Sometimes people say Yalla, that's incorrect. It's not to be shortened. So everywhere else, this is Hamzatul Wasp. 
We don't say bi Allah. We say billah. We don't say ala Allah. We say ala Allah. We don't say wa Allah. We say wa Allah. But when it becomes when it has ya before it, we don't say ya Allah. We say ya Allah. When Arabs speak when they say ya Allah, that's they're not they're not are they saying something different? No, they're saying the same thing. Ya Allah is just an uh, a colloquial pronunciation or an incorrect pronunciation of Ya Allah. Now, with Allah, always be aware that there's also the alternative phrase Allahumma, which means the same thing. So, Allahumma is the same as Ya Allah. We can say Allahumma ghfirli or Ya Allah ighfirli. But we usually will say Allahumma. So, that's with Allah. Otherwise, ya does not come with, before a noun with alif lam. Now, what happens when uh, ya comes? There is no tanween. We say ya aliyo. We say ya Allahu. There's no tanween. Ya faqimatu. If the noun is mudaf, it takes a, uh, it becomes mansu. So, for example, we say ya rasu lallahi because it's mansu. Ya rasu lallah. Ya rasu lullah is wrong. It's ya rasu lallah. When it, we have Abdullah, we add Ya, we say Ya Abdullah. Ya Abdullah. If we want to say Rabbuna, we add Ya, we say Ya Rabbana. Rabbana. Rabbana ghfir lana. Sometimes you can even drop the ya, like Rabbana ghfir lana, but it's still understood. Or Abu Abdullah, we say Aba Abdullah. Abu al Fadl, we say Ya Aba al Fadl. And so on. Now, when it's mudaf. If it's not mudaf, then it will be uh, with a bamma, but no tani. And what happens if we have a noun with. Uh, alif lam like ar rajul we want to call al ar rajul so then we will say ya ayyuha if it's masculine or if we're calling a feminine noun like al mar'a we'll say ya ayyatuha we can also say ya rajulu ya rajul o man or ya ayyuha ar rajul if we're going to call it with alif lam, we have to say ya ayyuha. And you can think of ya ayyuha as just one unit. Or ya ayyatuha as one unit. It's how you call it. We can say ya rasulu, O Messenger. Ya rasulu. Yes. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Okay. Um, is there anybody who did not receive uh, the notes for lesson 19? Last week, if you'd like to take a copy. And also, we're going to begin lesson 20. Does anybody need the notes for lesson 20? So we have lesson 20. So anybody who needs the notes for lesson 20 can take a copy. Uh, the notes are over there.
Any other sisters need a copy of the notes? I think a few of the sisters also need the notes. Okay, so with lesson 20, we're still dealing with the majzoom. And what happens with the majzoom is that in some cases we have to do a little bit more than simply putting a sukun or removing a noon. Because there are some types of verbs where the middle letter is given a sukun. So if we make the last letter sakin, then we have two sukuns in a row. The general rule in Arabic is if you have two letters that are sakin in a row, if one of them is a weak letter, a waw or a ya or an alif, you drop it. So let's just go through this and this is, if you remember that one rule, that when you have two sukuns in a row, if one of them is a waw or a ya or an alif, you drop it, then it will become very easy to know how these verb forms are, uh, are, are made. So take a look at lesson 20. It says that if the fi'l is ajwaf, ajwaf means that the middle letter, the second letter, is a waw or a ya or an alif. When it's majzoom, right, we'll start for example with yaqumu. Correct? So what do we do to make a, a verb majzum? We drop the dhamma, we make it a sukun. Now here we have a meme with a sukun and a wa with a sukun. What do we do? We drop the wa. So it becomes yaqum. Now we say yaqum, but in the dual do we need to do that? No, because we had yaqumane, we can drop the noon and we're okay. Yaquma. In the plural, we can just drop the noon. Yaqumuna becomes yaqumu. But then in the feminine singular, we had takumu. We drop the dhamma becomes takum. We have to drop the wa. becomes takum. And then takuma. And then yaqumna does not change used to be yaqumna, it stays yaqumna. Then in the anta form we have taqum, taquma, taqumu. Feminine will be taqumi. Remember that was originally taqumina, we just dropped the nu. Taquma and taqumna. And then akumu becomes akum, nakumu becomes nakum. So if you want, circle all in the singular column, the top one, yaqum, and then taqum, and then again taqum, skip taqumi, that's not to be circled, and then on the bottom circle aqum. And then across from aqum, circle naqum. Those five forms, the middle letter will be dropped. Does everybody remember which five forms it is? So start from uh, the top right hand corner, yaqum, number one. Below it, taqum. Below it, taqum again. Then skip taqumi, circle, aqum. And then across from aqum, naqum. Those five will drop the. Um, middle letter. Correct? The feminine plural yaqumna, taqumna, those don't change. So now we have seven. Then we have the four dual forms. They just drop the noon. That's eleven. The two masculine plural forms, they drop the noon. That's thirteen. And the feminine singular in the second person, that drops the noon. That's fourteen. So out of the 14 forms, the five that you've circled, those are the ones where the middle letter will be dropped. And the next chart is the same five forms. It's just instead of dropping a wow, in this case we're dropping a ya. So yasir, circle it. Yasira, yasiru. And then tasir, circle it. Tasira, 
yasirna and then tasir circle that tasira tasiru tasiri tasira tasirna asir circle nasir circle now, how many do you have circled in that five if you have five circled, that means you are following along correctly. If you have more or less than that, then next week you have to bring a cup of coffee with you to class. Now remember, this is the exact same thing that we did, even if it's not majzum with the feminine plural. right? In yasirna and tasirna, or up top in yakumna and taqumna, we drop the wa. Now we're just doing it in other forms because it's majzum. Down at the bottom. In this case, we're dropping a alif. It's yanamu originally, so the alif is going to be dropped. Now, if you didn't get the five in the last time, then uh, sharpen your pencil and be ready as I read it off. Yanam, that one is to be circled. Yanama, yanamu, those are just dropping the nu. Tanam, circle it. And then tanama, dropping the nu. Yanamna, no change. Next line, tanam, circle it. Tanama, we just drop the noon. Tanamu, we just drop the noon. And then tanami and tanama, drop the noon in both of those. Tanamna, there's no change. Anam and nanam, we drop the noon in both, we uh, drop the Alif in both of those, circle both of those. You should have five circles. So there's nothing complicated in these three ch charts. It's just a matter of you give it a sukun. The last letter has a sukun in those forms. And when it has a sukun, then because there's going to be a weak letter that also has a sukun before it, you drop the weak letter. Now, how does that affect the fi'lul amr? Remember, the fi'lul amr is formed just like the majzum form. So in the majzum, if you're dropping that letter, then in the amr, the letter will drop as well. Now notice also that because in these forms, the, the letter after the harful mudari, the, the first letter of the verb has a haraka, we don't need to add hamzatul was. So let's look at taqumu. Right? Taqumu means you stand. Taqumu. Correct? What will I do? First, I'll drop the ta, so I have kumu. Correct? There. Then I'll give the mima sukun. And I have to drop the wall. Cool. Or you can do the that part first. But the point is that with qum, once I drop the ta, I don't need to add a hamza because it already has a dhamma. The qaf is not sakin, it's it has a haraka. So I'll say qum. So if you look at the chart, we'll drop the wa, we'll say qum. The dual and plural will not have anything dropped. Huma, humu. The feminine also, humi, kuma, and the plural will be qumna. Right? Ya qumna will become qumna. Ta qumna will become qumna. Any questions? So, look at uh, the next verb. This is from Sara Yasiru. The, the uh, verb form that we're forming the Amr from, the command is Tasiru. Thank you. Tasiru. Correct? So, let's do it the way that you wanted to do it. That, that's the correct order. First, we'll drop the um, or first we'll make it my zoom. So we'll say tasir. 
But then we have to drop the ya because the ya is sakin, the ra is sakin, so we'll say tasir. Right? Now that is uh, just like the fi'l majzum. To make it amr, we have to drop the ta sir. Do we need to add a hamza? No. So we'll have sir, but in the dual, the ya will return. Sira, siru, siri, sira, sirna. Siru fil ard in the Quran is from the same form. Travel. And then in the verb tanamo, what does tanamo mean? You sleep. We'll make it majzum by trying to give a sukun to the meme. We have an alif and a sukun. That is a big no no in Arabic. What do we do to solve that? What do we do to solve that? We drop the alif. So we say tanam. Correct? That's how we form the majzum. Right, tanam, we have to drop the alif, tanam. And then we drop the ta, we say nam. Nam. Nam in Arabic means sleep. In, uh, in Arabic, when they want to tell somebody to get lost, uh, and I'll censor part of it, but they say, Ruhunam. Go, Ruh, Raha Yeruhu, to go, to travel. Ruhunam. So, Ruhunam. Go and sleep. I mean, you could say Nam, which means to sleep. They might also say something kind of colorful between ruh and nam. So go and sleep. But nam means sleep. The dual again will be nama, namu, nami, nama, namna. Uh, namna. Uh, nimna, you're probably thinking of the madi. So nama We'll say nama, nama, namu, namat, namata, nimna. They slept. Nimta, nimtuma, nimtum. Nimti, nimtuma, nimtunna. Nimto, nimna. Nimto, I slept. Nimna, we slept. That's the past tense. In the Mali, it's nimna. But here it's namna, sleep. Tanamo means you sleep. Nam means sleep. La tanam means don't sleep. Now you say cool right now because you've only done ajwar. But now we're going to do naqis. Naqis is um, when the last letter has a harf al like in laqiya, yalqa, right? Laqiya is the past, yalqa is the present. Now take a look at yalqa. Remember when we wanted to make yalqa, yalqa mansub, we didn't change it because you put a fatha on an alif, you can't put a fatha on an alif. So just leave it yalqa. But when you want to make it majzum, then you have to do something drastic. And the drastic step the Arabs take to show that it's majzum is they drop the yal together. So yalqa becomes yalqa. Yalqa. Now, again, it's those same five forms. Four singular, and then the first person plural. 
So sharpen your pencils, sharpen your minds. Let's read the chart. Yalqa, circle it. Then yalqa ya and yalqa. In these two, it's just the noon that's dropping. Next row. Talqa, circle it. Then talqa ya, just drop the noon. And then yalqayna, we don't do anything. Next row. Talqa, circle it. And then we have talqa ya and talqa. And that, those two are just dropping the noon. Then we have talqay and talqaya. We're just dropping the noon in those two. Talqayna, we are not changing it. It's unchanged. And then alqa, nalqa, and both of those, we're dro we are dropping the last letter. Circle those two. Yalqayna. Yalqayna is uh, mudare. It's not mabi. So is it clear? Everybody has five circles? If you have five circles, flip the page. Now the same thing applies to yarmi. Right? In the verb yarmi, remember when you wanted to make it mansu, what did we do? If you want to make yarmi mansu, what did we do? We just added a fatha. Yarmiya. Right? It's pretty easy. You can say yarmiya. But if we want to make it majzum, again, we need a drastic step. And the drastic step is that we drop the ya. We say yarme. So we'll say yarme, yarmiya, yarmu, tarme, tarmiya. Yarmina, Tarme, Tarmiya, Tarmu, Tarmi, Tarmiya, Tarmina, Arme, Narme. Which five have the uh, the last letter dropped? It's the same Yarme, Tarme, Tarme, Arme, Narme. Yarme is a uh, Yarmi means he throws. So Yarme is the majzum form of he throws. And finally, it's possible that the last letter would be a wow. So for example, we have the verb um, Yad'u. Maybe write that. Yad'u, he calls. How do we make that mansub? Just add a fatha. Yad uwa. But if we want to make it much zoom, it already has a, ja a sukun. So we can't add a sukun. So if it's already got a sukun, you drop the wall. And it becomes Yad u. So you'll see Yad u. Yad uwa. Yad u. Tad u. Tad uwa. Yad uuna. Tad u. Tad'uwa, tad'u, tad'i, tad'uwa, tad'una, ad'u, nad'u. So far, so good. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing unexpected, right? If that's easy and understandable, then the fi'l al-amr is also based on the same pattern. Right? In the fi'l al-amr, for the singular form, we're going to have to drop the last letter again. It doesn't matter if the last letter was an alif, or if the last letter was a ya, or if the last letter was a wa. But in the singular form, the talqa or the tad'u uh, or the tarmi form will drop it.
But the dual and the plural and the feminine singular, we don't need to drop that last letter, because or it will uh, be the same as it was in the mudhari. So let's look at the Amr. Let's actually form the Amr for each of them. So we have Talqa. Somebody walk me through forming the Amr for Talqa. First make it Majzum. Make it Majzum by? Well, first make it Majzum. Make, yes, yeah, so we drop the Ya. So we have Talqa. Correct? Now what do we do? We drop the top. We can't just leave it So we'll add a Hamza and we'll give it a Kasra. Ilqa. Look good. Tarmi. What will we do for Tarmi? How will you make it much zoom? Tarme, and then you'll drop the ta, so you have. You'll need to add a hamza. You say irme. If you have tadru, you'll make it majzum by saying tadru. Correct. Then when you drop the ta. You're left with a dal ain. You have to add a hamza. What haraka will the hamza have? Ud'u. Right? Ud'u ila sabili rabbika. Call to the, to the path of your Lord. So we can read it now. We have ilqa, ilqaya, ilqaw. Add the vowel signs because the chart, the vowel signs didn't get printed. So ilqa, ilqaya. The qaf has a fatha. Ilqaya. In the plural, ilqaw. Qaf has a fatha. Then in the feminine, ilqay. The qaf has a fatha. Ilqaya. And il qayna. So in all cases, the qaf has a fatha. Next one, irmi, irmiya, irmu, irmi, irmiya, irmina. And then, ud'u, ud'uwa, ud'u, ud'i, ud'uwa, ud'una. So, the material is easier than it looks. Uh, but I will admit that it doesn't always look easy. There's certain patterns, and once you get used to those patterns, then it becomes second nature. So, in the case of uh, a naqis verb that ends in a harful illa, you'll just drop the harful illa in certain cases. In the case of an ajwaf verb, you will drop the harful illa in certain cases. Why is it ilqa and not Because when you have an amr, when you add a hamza, it will always have either a kasra or a dhamma. So, irme, you have a kasra. Ud'u, you have a dhamma. If the second letter of the mubarak has a fatha, like in ilqa, then the hamza will have a kasra. You will never have a fatha. So you say, isma. Listen, you don't say asma. You say ifta, open. You don't say afta. And the reason for that, one of the reasons is that afta means I open. Asma means I hear. So when you command, you say ifta, isma. 
to make it clear that there's a difference. Because, of course, in Arabic you don't want to have ambiguity. That would be um, improper.